Once upon a time, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg teamed up to deliver one of the most iconic characters in movie history. He's courageous, reckless, and 100% badass. Unfortunately, Short Round never did get a spin-off movie series, so we're going to talk about Indiana Jones instead. It's another best and worst of on Movie Feud. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skullfuck is a pretty stupid movie. Not jumping out of a plane onto a raft down the side of a mountain stupid. No, 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 no. I'm talking Shia swinging from vines with monkeys during a car chase stupid. I don't hate this film like a lot of others do, but it's by far the worst of the series with ultra corny action, shoehorned characters brought back, and an ending that was a tad too sci-fi for the indie crowd. I'm not gonna lie though, I happen to enjoy the nuked fridge scene. I know I'm alone in that sentiment. Harrison Ford just doesn't have the energy he once did, but it was still great seeing the band get back together, even if the music they're playing wasn't quite up to their old hits. I'm not a huge fan of this dark follow-up film, but I will acknowledge that there's some really great moments in it, like the snake pit, the mystery mine ride, and of course the Mortal Kombat-esque heart pull. Finish him. Plus victory. Fatality. Indy usually has sidekicks to banter with, but none of them are near as annoying as Short Round and Steven Spielberg's wife Kate Capsha as Willie Scott. The 1984 film effects are very rough at times, with the final bridge setting being comically bad now. Nevertheless, it's not shy of swinging from vines with monkeys during a chase sequence, so it's the number three spot. Toasty! Raiders of the Lost Ark introduces us to the titular character Indiana Jones himself and what an introduction it was. The first time we see him he's attempting to take an ancient artifact. His decoy statue doesn't work and a booby trap is sprung. This is just one of a string of great action sequences in the picture that span from places like Nepal to Egypt. Indy learns of a biblical artifact known as the Ark of the Covenant but he's not alone in this knowledge and he's got some competition also pining for it. And it's power. Joining Mr. Jones is Marion Ravenwood, played by Karen Allen. These two have great chemistry together, unlike their forced reunion in Crystal Skull. I love the tone of this picture, which always has a level of playfulness to it. The movie never gets hampered down by an overly serious tone. The 80s was very good for Harrison Ford as he starred in two different giant franchises with Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Or maybe it was Harrison Ford who was good to the 80s. In either case, the audience wins. After an odd little aside, we're back in full force with Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It has the one thing number two is sorely lacking, which of course is watching Harrison Ford whip the shit out of some Nazi scum. As a bonus, we have a father-son dynamic at play with Sean Connery playing the part of Indy's father, Professor Henry Jones. This is by far my favorite story of the bunch, and it's basically the template for the Uncharted franchise. Henry Jones goes missing while embarking on an expedition to find the coveted Holy Grail. Indy tracks his father down, only to wind up in the middle of a race to get to the Grail first. The final act is fun and intense, as our lead archaeologist attempts multiple tests to see if he's truly worthy of the prize. I don't know why I kissed my finger. Let's roll to the conclusion. It's a tad unsettling that every time I look back on these older properties, Hollywood ugly greed rears its ugly head, and I'm forced to talk about the fact that there might be more of these movies in production. Whether it's a prequel, a sequel, a sidequel, a triquel, a truffle, it doesn't matter. They want to cash in on the name. Spielberg, Lucas, and Ford were a triple threat back in the 80s. They tried to retrieve that spark in 2008, but failed to capture the spirit of the original run. This will happen again, either with the same creators or new blood. But let's just remember the good times. And as always, I want to hear from you. Post a comment below. Let's see your ranking and how well it stacks up against mine. And remember, this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. I won't be surprised if we get a short round spin-off now, now that it's been so long. He's older, grizzled. It's a dark, gritty series. He's killing Nazis and banging hoes. I'd pay to see that. I'd pay to see that.